Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade. I'm John Solo, and here's my good buddy, Gay Santa. How are you, Andrew? <laughs> hey. Hey. That's that's when 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 I when he popped or, into the John, call. I can always the do that. Hey. <laughs> I, I no, I know you can. When he popped into the call before, the, I was like, "Man, I need sunglasses in here to look at this screen. It's amazing. It's uh, that's the most. You have the most decorated set that I've ever had on any of my shows ever. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yay! You win. Uh, the uh, the tree has has God knows how many lights and almost six hundred birds on it. Six. Wait. Oh, okay. Well, there's got to be some sort of story there. I, I've. I guess I've well, never well, been to a Pennsylvania Christmas. What's up with all the birds, Andrew? No, Dominic and I've just been collecting them. They're they're all different kinds. Of, some are wood. Some are glass. Um. Some are some have been handmade. Um. Yeah, you know, we've been Dominic and I have been collecting them for twenty five years. Oh wait a no, minute! No, no, I get it. There's a tree under there. Look at that. I didn't. Yeah, yes, exactly, John. There's a tree under those five, six hundred birds. So why? There's a tree is, under there. Is there any logic to collecting birds? Were you guys like really into Hitchcock when you were younger? Or how'd that work? No, I just like birds. They're pretty. Okay. I, I'll give you that. They're uh, avian. And is that? I'm not a religious man. Um. The candle you got in the background there—is that some some Jewish thing going on? Is that like a no, uh, no? Um, it's a German. It's a gotcha. German um, um, decoration. Usually, they're candles. I I use I have a you know electrified one. Right. But yeah, oh, it's, it's a. There's a German name for it, which I don't know what it is. I'm sure it sounds clean. Dominic uh, does. I don't. <laughs> it's wonderful. It looks fantastic, man. I got to say, you 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 look great. It looks like you're doing really really well. And uh, is that before I wait? What do you got going on I, on your shirt oh, there? See. What do you what do you, what do you got going on on? Okay, you got the okay. That's very nice. That's uh, on your shirt. I, I'm used to your gay cowboy shirt thing going on, and then I know the gay fireman. Oh. What what is that one? This is unwrap me. This is this is the Christmas one with all with all the the nearly naked boys surrounded by presents saying unwrap me. But do me a favor because we've known each other. You need one, never, John. Never change. You need Just... one of these and show up at home with Jody and wearing <laughs> only this, saying, "Here I you would, go, dear. Unwrap well, me." I would. I would need this sleeveless variety. That way, I could show off the guns, you know. So I would need to cut the sleeves out. Um, by the way, um, one of the people in the crowd said it's a, a Lichterbogen. I think that's how you say it. There you go. That's right. A, a Lichterbogen. Um, that sounds yep. kinky to me, but okay. Um, so today... I think Bogen uh, means light. It's, it's a light something. Yes. I'm sure it is. Uh, my, my best friend is German. I will ask her at some point and she will laugh at me. Um, today, we're, we're talking about, as if you can't already tell, a Christmas book that Andrew Gray has released. It came out today. It is called... Here we go. The cover there, Rudolph yes. the Rescue it's called Jack. Rudolph Russell. the Rescue Jack Russell. <laughs> a must love, yep. love dogs companion story. I'm assuming. And have you done any more of these books? I mean, is this a first in the well, series? How's this going to work? No, no. Um, I did. We did Rescue Me came out last year, mm -hmm. and we read it on here. Read some of it on here, and then we've got this one, which is Rudolph. Okay. Rudolph is at the shelter, and this is a Christmas one. And then next month we have Rescue Us, which is the follow-up. Gotcha. Okay, so it okay. is definitely it's definitely oh. a, a short little series kind of thing. Yes, these are all centered around a dog rescue. Gotcha. Um, now Andrew has told me today that he is going to read the prologue to this uh, for you guys. I'm I'm not going to read. It's going to be all Andrew here, and I can't wait to hear this. Um, and then we're going to read the first chapter together, which has the, the, the main characters and such in it. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this. Now, um, he's also told me that you're not going to do the, the kid's voice for this, right? You're not going to, this is going to be. No, just, as you no, would say, but, but I may industry, cry. Th this is a straight read that you're going to do here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kick back. I'm going to relax. I can't do anything straight, John. You <laughs> I've, know that. I've, 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 I, you just I can't. Know. Sorry. I have no but, doubt. Uh, yes, that... I'm going to do it as a read through and and then and then John is going to do his normal deal 
and and I'm going. I forget who I'm going to read when we do chapter one, but I'll tell you when we get there. We'll figure it out. Um, and by the way, we'll um, figure it so, out. And I, I'm I'm sorry, person in the crowd. I I can't I can't pronounce your name. Uh, I think it's Ute Hofferkamp, but I'm probably okay. butchering that. I'm so sorry. Uh, they say the the uh, it translates a uh, uh, Lichterbogen translates to a light bow like a rainbow. So there you go. That's yes, exactly. This is also an educational show today. Um, I also noticed, speaking of not straight, I think your tree's a little, a little crooked as well. But that's just me. Anyway, no, it's probably no, it's uh, probably the fact that I'm sitting my computer on a chair so I can see here. I, uh, so the computer gonna, is probably a little wonky. There you go, John. <laughs> I understand now. Not even his computer is straight. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to let you get into the prologue here. But I want to let everyone okay. know, and this is something that's been important to the crowd. I know over the years. The the uh, this book is dedicated to Dominic, who loves me unconditionally, and to Zach the Jack Russell mix, who inspired the story. And it's good that you're finally de dedicating a book to your husband. Uh, poor guy never gets any of these. Oh please, so. I dedicated dedicated the last one to him too. <laughs> now uh, I'm going to leave it up to Andrew. You're in charge. It's your show. I'm going to okay. get back and drink coffee and watch. Okay, so here we go. Rudolph the Rescue Jack Russell. I still miss mom Claire. She got me when I was just a puppy and I remember her looking me in the eyes and smiling. I licked her face and peed on her because I was so excited to meet her. Mom Claire always smelled better than dog biscuits and even ham, though she didn't smell better than chicken because nothing smells better than chicken. The breeder later called me bad, breeder lady called me bad, but mom Claire smiled and said it was okay. I licked her face again and she held me close. That's when I knew she loved me. Mom Claire took me home and fed me good stuff. She gave me a nice place to sleep right at the foot of her bed on a, pad, on a small pad of my own. I th always thought of Mom Claire as special, and she was. People came and went, some were nice, and some, like her son Weasel or Wesley, I'm not sure, were not nice and smelled bad. I knew I had to protect Mom Claire from him even if she didn't know it. I always thought Mom Claire and I would be together forever. But then one night I was asleep and the angels came and took Mom Claire away. They didn't take the people part of her, just the love part. I missed her and stayed with Mom Claire because I didn't want her to be alone. Then Weasel came and put me in a crate. I barked and snapped at him because I wanted to stay with Mom Claire, but she was gone. And now so was my home and everything. He drove and drove. I liked the car with Mom Claire. She used to stop at McDonald's and she always gave me a bite of her hamburger. But Weasel didn't do anything like that. So I laid down in the crate, my head on my paws, watching the back of the seat. I didn't know what was going to happen and I was scared. The car smelled funny, like old cheese and stinky feet. I love cheese, but this smelled yucky and gross. Finally, the car stopped and Weasel lifted the crate out of the stinky car. I was happy for the fresh air and stood, looking out the crate door, wagging my tail in expectations. Was this my home? No, not home, shelter. I heard that word a lot. There were lots of other dogs. Some of them watched like me wanting to play. Others were old and tired, some even sick. But Mitchell, the good man at the shelter, tried to make them feel better. Mitchell was nice and gave me treats. He also gave me a shot, which wasn't nice, but then he gave me a treat, so that was okay. And the shot didn't hurt that much. Still, the shelter was loud, with barking dogs and stuff, and I missed Mom Claire a lot. I missed sleeping with her and the walks we took, and I missed looking out the front window to watch out for things. Mom Claire didn't have dog eyes, not like me. Mostly... I miss the love. People came and went, and a lot of them took dogs with them. For for everyone, I put I put my paws on the on the door of the enclosure and wagged my tail, excited excited to see if they would take me home and take me to a forever home. That was all I wanted, a forever home. Like what I thought I had with Mom Claire. But I wasn't a quitter. Mom, Mom Claire had loved me with her whole heart, and I wanted that again. So I didn't give up, no matter what. God damn it, Andrew Gray, you made me emotional. Just so everyone knows, that was a dog. That was his dog voice. That wasn't uh, 
wasn't uh, it, uh, it wasn't the MC, but it was a dog. He did a really good job, though. I nope, like no. The, the in this book, the prologue and the epilogue are written from the dog's point of view, which is wonderful. Um, we're going to get into chapter one at this point. Um, everybody, get your get your Kleenex and stuff. The, the chapter one, I scanned it earlier, and it doesn't look. It's not going to tear you up like that just did. Um, and it looks to me like I'm uh, going to read Alex. You read the rest. Gotcha. I got her here. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter one. You know you don't have to do this, Palmer said with his usual gentle expression. He had been Alex's therapist for the last few years, and Alex knew he was right. There was no real need for him to go to the shelter, except that he was determined to conquer one of his fears. The list of things he avoided was long. Birds... birds. They carry disease. Heights, because he just knew he was going to fall. Clowns, the damned things were scary. Even rabbits, he just knew those beady eyes were judging him. And dogs. Every other kid he'd known growing up had had a dog, and they had to shut them away every time Alex came over, which he didn't do very often, because they didn't want to play with the weird kid who didn't like Fido. So, here he was standing outside a shelter near Carlisle, Pennsylvania, where he could hear the barks, yips, and howls of what sounded like a million dogs. His instinct was to get back in his car, close the door, start the engine, and peel the hell out of there. Except well, that would involve another of Alex's issues, wasting his tires by spinning them. Instead, he stood still, breathing in through his nose and out his mouth the way Palmer had taught him. Uh, I guess it's me. Are you Alexander? A stop the clocks and hold time still so Alex could take in the epitome of gorgeousness man, asked as he strode across the gravel path from the converted barn that held the shelter. Alex willed himself not to do something stupid as the man's lips parted and his mouth drew upward and deep blue eyes took on a sparkle. I'm Luther. We talked on the phone a little while ago. Luther wore jeans that hugged his thighs just the right way. His coat was unzipped, so Alex got a peek of his lime green shirt, opened at the collar to reveal the barest hint of golden skin before it disappeared behind the fabric. He refused to draw into himself the way he usually did when he met people he knew were so far out of his league that he might as well not even try. The barks and yips drifted out of the building and into the cold early min winter morning. Alex's fear threatened to rise, but Luther simply smiled more brightly. That's me. He finally answered, proud his voice didn't crack. You said on the phone that you have an issue with dogs and that you were hoping to have a chance to face it, Luther said. That's pretty brave. How many dogs are there? We currently have 15. There are some larger dogs as well as smaller ones. We're working with a few to correct some behavioral issues. Those are not the ones we're going to put with you. Since you said you were really trying to get over a fear of dogs, I thought of five that are really well behaved. Can I ask what it is that you're actually afraid is going to happen? Luther asked gently. Alex liked that Luther didn't make a move toward the shelter or try to push him forward. Talking was good. That was what Palmer had told him. I don't know. Maybe it's going to attack me or eat my face or something? He could tell Luther was trying not to grin. Okay, uh, well, first thing. We don't have any uh, face eaters here. All of the dogs I can... <laughs> think I can introduce you to are sweet animals. They might try to lick you, and a few of them will bound around because they're so excited to see you. These are dogs who love attention and people. Alex felt himself tense. Are you sure? Very much so, Luther said. Why don't you come inside? All of the dogs are in enclosures. I thought you could just look around and see them. They can't get out, and you can take your time. He led the way to the door and opened it, then held it while Alex decided if this was truly a good idea or the worst thing he had tried since those watermelon smoothies with vodka last summer. Yuck. Making up his mind, he took a step inside. Enclosures lined both sides of the concrete aisle floor, some larger than others. The scent of dog was prevalent, but not unpleasant. There's a lot of them. Yes, there are. And we got a call an hour ago about a couple more that Mitchell is going to pick up when he finishes at the clinic. Uh, I volunteer here a couple days a month just to help out after work and on weekends. Alex swept his gaze over all the dogs. 
Some of them looked like the embodiment of him, closed off, way back in their enclosures. One even shook a little. So these are all alone? Yes. We are trying to find each dog their forever home. Don't feel like you have to hurry. I know this is a big step for you, and the dogs are always a little uh, energetic when someone comes in. But they'll settle down. Alex nodded, his heart racing as he took a step toward one of the enclosures. Is something wrong with him? Her. Luther corrected gently, those big eyes going even softer. Yeah. When we found her, she had three puppies and was giving them everything she had. Elsa here was so thin and malnourished that a lot of her hair had fallen out. The pups are weaned now, and we've been feeding her well, so her hair is growing back. Luther knelt by the cage, and Elsa came over to him. She was reddish-brown, wide in her shoulders, but not too big. Luther opened the enclosure, and Elsa went right to him and rested against his leg. She looks strong. Under normal circumstances, she would be. But now she's a little weak. You can pet her if you want. She's a real sweetheart. The way Luther said the words almost broke Alex's heart. He could hear the hurt for her in his voice. But more than that, Alex saw the pain in those big brown doggy eyes, like she understood a hurt that went so deep you didn't know how to climb out. You don't have to. What happened to her? Alex asked, not ready to try touching, yet. Well, hopefully we can find her a home. Mitchell spayed her, and she's growing stronger. I've been thinking about adopting her myself, Luther said. But I want to do that with each of the dogs, and Mitchell says I need to be sure. He lifted his gaze to meet Alex's. I'm a big softy. It doesn't look like it at all to me, Alex said before clamping his lips closed. Before Alex could die of embarrassment, Luther chuckled warmly, his gaze darkening for just a second. <laughs> well, I really am. If I could, I swear I'd take half the dogs home with me. You don't have one? Alex asked. He found his attention drawn to Luther, his worry about the dogs around him abating somewhat. No. Uh, I've moved a couple times in the last few years, and I haven't been settled enough for a dog. I just got a job in the psychology department at Dickinson College, so hopefully I'm going to be here for a while. I just have to make sure I get the right companion. For a second, Alex wondered what kind of company Luther wanted. But then, he was probably being foolish. Of course, he meant one of the dogs. He wasn't talking about Alex, even though Luther made Alex's temperature rise. He gave Elsa a gentle pat, and she licked his hand. Then Luther guided her back in the enclosure and closed the door. Alex followed him through the shelter, watching each dog as they passed. A few whined and one barked, making Alex jump. That's Janie. She's just loud. Luther said as he approached the enclosure. The dog stopped barking and stretched, her backside in the air, tail wagging. She's just getting my attention. He petted her gently, and Janie settled down. Sometimes it's just a matter of seeing what they want. They moved on, and Luther opened another enclosure and took out a small dog that couldn't have weighed more than five pounds. This is Dolly. She loves people. Luther held her gently. Come on over. She's just a sweetheart. Okay. Damn it all, Alex felt like a kid. Hell, most kids did this all the damned time, and here he was ready to piss himself over a tiny dog. He reached out and lightly stroked behind her ears, half closing his eyes, ready to pull away at any second. She likes you. Alex continued gently stroking between her ears, and Dolly looked up at him with beautiful eyes. She's so nice. Yes, she is. Most dogs are. I know that some can be really uh, energetic, like uh, Rex over there. He has so much energy he doesn't know what to do about it. So he comes off as aggressive, but he just wants attention. Luther continued holding Dolly for him, and Alex kept petting her. Before he knew it, Luther had transferred Dolly to his arms, and Alex just petted her while she lay there. Alex blinked when he truly realized he was holding a dog. How did you do that? He asked. You just gave her to me, and... He could feel his tension rising. You were comfortable, and she's happy with you. Luther gently stroked his shoulder. You aren't going to hurt her, and she likes you. She does? All the dogs he had met growing up had tried to jump on him to push him down, 
They barked and raced at him like they wanted to chase him away. Dolly was sweet, and she slowly turned her head, then rested it against his chest. She'll stay right there for as long as you want to pet her, Luther said quietly before taking Dolly and gently setting her back in the enclosure. You realize you held a dog, and I think you liked it. No one ever teased Alex, but Luther seemed to be. For a second he wondered if Luther was picking on him, but that smile had returned. Okay, I guess I did. Alex smiled to himself. He and Palmer had been dealing with his anxiety issues for a while, and they had agreed that Alex should try working on just one of them to start. Alex had chosen dogs because he passed by the veterinary blah, by the veterinary office and the shelter every day on his way to work at a grocery store corporate office, where he was in charge of store payouts. How about another? Luther asked. This is Rudolph. He's mostly Jack Russell Terrier. He was brought in because his owner passed away. Her son brought him here to get rid of him. Alex found himself almost unable to talk. You mean he just threw this little guy away? He did. From what Mitchell said, Mitchell runs the shelter and is a vet up the street. Rudolph here hated the son with a passion, barking at him and snarling all the time. So if we know nothing else, Rudolph has good people instincts because the guy was a real jerk. Luther let Rudolph out, and he pranced right up to Alex and wound through his legs, happy and maybe a little jumpy, tail going a million miles an hour. Rudolph put his front paws on Alex's legs and looked up at him with what had to be a doggy smile. What do I do? Alex asked. Just pet him. Rudolph is so wonderful. We've had some interest in him, but everyone seems to pick a different dog. He's really special, though. Alex took a deep breath and sweat broke out on the back of his neck. But he had just held a dog, so he could do this. Before he could change his mind, he leaned down and petted Rudolph, whose tail just wagged faster, if that was possible. Rudolph licked his hand, and Alex pulled back. Is he tasting me? Sort of, Luther said. He isn't going to bite you. Dogs use their nose and tongue to explore the world the way we use our hands and eyes. So it's okay. He's just getting to know you. Alex tried again, petting Rudolph. He wasn't sure how much more of this he was going to be able to take. The dogs had been good, and the experience was positive, but Alex wondered how long it would be before something went wrong, because something always did. He's really sweet, Alex said to try to reassure himself. Palmer had said that saying positive things out loud so he could hear them when he was stressed might help him. Do you want to sit with him? Luther asked. Then, bah, then he led Alex to a chair. He sat, and Rudolph jumped onto his lap and balanced on his legs, tongue out, tail going, watching him with that doggy smile. Luther said nothing, and Alex petted Rudolph, who sat down. I think I like him. He sure likes you. Alex kept petting Rudolph. Do you get a lot of dogs at this time of year? Christmas is a hard time for a lot of people. Mitchell says that the holidays are a time when lots of people get dogs. Some get them as gifts for others, but Mitchell discourages that. A dog is a personal choice. Last year, he had someone bring a dog back the day after Christmas for a refund. Luther rolled his eyes, and Rudolph licked Alex's chin. Under normal circumstances, something like that would send his anxiety through the roof. But Alex didn't seem to mind with Rudolph. I really like him. You're a good boy. Alex told Rudolph, who leaned against his chest. You seem to like me too. Alex took a deep breath, and to his surprise, some of his general anxiety began to abate. The world tended to be a source of worry for him. He and Palmer had talked through this a number of times. He was on medication, and had tried yoga, breathing, meditation, and uh, God knows what else. But this little dog soothed him in a way he never would have thought possible. Hello? Someone called from the back. Should we put him back? Alex asked as a man and a woman came inside. You need to help them. Luther smiled at him once more. Just sit there with Rudolph and relax. I'm going to help these people. You can take all the time you want. He leaned closer, his breath warming Alex's cheek. Maybe what you both need is a little attention and care. And there is nothing like a little puppy love. He went over to greet the couple and show them through the shelter while Alex sat with Rudolph. 
He watched and petted the energetically sweet dog. Alex kept half an eye on the couple as Luther talked to them about various dogs. They took a few out, including Elsa and a dog named Tally, as well as Rex and Tipper, but they couldn't seem to make up their minds. I think I want a smaller dog, the woman said. She looked at Dolly and one other before turning her attention to where Alex sat. As soon as she looked at him, Alex's anxiety went wild. He had no idea why, but he didn't like the woman at all. Something got his back up, and he put an arm around Rudolph to shield him from her. Is that dog available? She asked, pointing, in a manic, uh, pointing a manicured finger in their direction. That's Rudolph. He's been here in the shelter a few weeks, Luther said. He gave her Rudolph's backstory as the dog pressed closer to Alex, pulling his tail close. The wagging came to a halt. He's, uh... Not available. Alex found himself saying in a rush. He's being adopted, and I'm sure you'll find the perfect dog for you. Preferably someplace else, he added in his mind. Isn't that right, Rudolph? You're coming home with me. That tale started going fast, like he understood Alex. Rudolph licked his chin again, prancing on Alex's legs, even as Alex wondered if he'd made a huge mistake. And that would be chapter one. You got a prologue and a chapter one today. It was a dual duet reading there. Um, and see, I think, <laughs> I, think I, I, I think you write dogs better than you do kids, man. You should, you should do more dogs. That was fantastic. Um, thank you. Uh, it's good to see you, man. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to see you again before Christmas. So if I don't, um, well, good well actually you will because we have one in two weeks. Do we? All right. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah. I bet you Jane will tell me about that. So, <laughs> Yeah, Jane has it on the calendar. Excellent. Well, then I will see you in a couple weeks. I know that you're going to have to schedule at least two days to get all them birds off that tree. So got to get that on the calendar, too, I would imagine. Wait, uh, oh, it's easy. It only takes a couple hours. I take them off. Dominic packs them up. We put them in the tub, and away it goes. It's like a production line. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyways, thank you again. I uh, love you all. I will see everybody on Thursday for Rambling Thank Rambling you. Show. Good luck. Peace out. Bye.